while you were in college, is that when you became a DJ host? Oh, on the radio. Yeah. yeah. yeah um, I was uh, walking through the library one day and they had a little booth out and they said, hey, come and be a DJ at our college radio station. And I said, oh, that sounds fun. And so I went and it turned out to be the best decision I ever made in my life. Yeah. Because uh, I met my wife there. And it was it was just serendipitous. Yeah. And such a fun time. Yeah. And it was history. I'm just kidding meant to be um so you and you still are a dj host is that correct for most uh, punk least punk most punk least punk is the show that i do for the most part yeah i have a little jazz show i do but it's kind of on hiatus for the winter it'll come back um and that's on the kwnk uh the reno community radio station awesome. um yeah so sophie and i started with the radio at unr doing Wolfpack radio mm -hmm. and it taught us a lot and it kind of got us forward but um a group of people from wolfpack radio uh including us but i don't we're not the drivers behind it we were just kind of along for the ride <laughs> but formed wolfpack radio uh into kwnk and wolfpack is still there okay but that kind of core group of people started kwnk got the funding got the fm transmitter uh time and and it's just grown and grown it's become a really phenomenal local radio station so um, yeah, I have a show uh, that I do there, uh, awesome. Most Punk, Least Punk, all about punk rock music. I do it every week. And I also podcast it out um, all over the world. It's on iTunes and Stitcher and everything. When that iTunes isn't trying to take me off the air for copyright infringement or something. Oh, whoops. <laughs> you know, yeah, well, what are you going to do? Right. But, you know, it's punk rock, so I'm going to do it anyway. But yeah, so now <laughs> it's not just Reno, but it's out to like, well, it's that's how podcasts are. It's the whole world. That's awesome. And uh yeah, it's very fulfilling and very fun. Um, this one hour of fast punk rock you know, every every week, and and it keeps me with my foot back in that world. Um, you know, since I don't play in a band anymore, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's COVID right now, say nobody playing in bands right, right now. <laughs> you know, it, it keeps me in that world of punk rock that I, I love so much, and and keeps me involved with it, and I get to share what I love mm -hmm. with other people. And I know there's at least a couple of people out there who also like it, so. Yeah. You know, they get to enjoy something in life because of doing that. So um, that's so awesome. Yeah, you know, that's the cool part, thing about radio and podcasts. Mm -hmm. You can reach out to the world and touch people with your love and interest. Right. And other people can pick up on that. And maybe that inspires them to do something or maybe it's just, boy, I really like that song. And then they go and listen to the song some more. Yeah. Made their day. Yeah. So you mentioned it keeps you in the punk rock, I guess, life or, um, when did you, I guess, when did you realize your love for punk rock? I was a really dorky kid. And I had no idea about nothing. And I listened to whatever music I kind of came across. And um, it was all bad. Like, it, it was just, I didn't know what i liked other than classical music because i had always liked that since i was a little little kid mm -hmm. but like i would just like listen to whatever pop and like oh this is cool but i was super dorky and didn't know about anything and didn't fit in anywhere i was not a part of any clique i didn't have a lot of friends mm -hmm. and then um in about the end of the seventh grade i discovered punk rock and the punk rock world in that community and I ended up finding a place I could fit in because I didn't fit in anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And here was a group, here was a, a whole world that says, no, this is for the misfits. This is for the weirdos. You can be here. The whole point is you're not being judged. The whole point is you can do whatever the hell you want to do. Yeah. You can be yourself, whatever yourself might be. And that was remarkably freeing and empowering for me at a time in my life, you know, as a kid, mm -hmm. as a young man who's like, you know, pressure from family of you're going to do life this way and right. pressure from society of you have to be this way. And, um, and none of it particularly what I wanted, but did I have the strength and skills to say, well, I'm going to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. and, and the punk rock kind of helped me do that. It gave me the, it, it's wrong to say it gave me the permission, mm -hmm. but it, it made me feel like, no, I can really get away with just doing what I want. Yeah. It kind of gave you the space. 
to be who you are. It sounds it did. like. It did. And, and all through, I got really into it in high school and I started playing in bands. And even though I ended up working for the, God, this is the most unpunk thing ever. But <laughs> like, even though I worked for the military, um, that's never where my heart was. Mm -hmm. And so I might have been working for, you know, to do this Department of Defense project over here. But on the weekend, I'd be at punk shows and I'd be talking about, like, you know, critical economic theory and like how we can actually stand up to the guys that I'm working for for my paycheck every day. <laughs> right. So maybe I was, I don't know. I, I probably didn't have my heart in what it was paying me every day, but I took their money, I guess. Yeah. That um, makes me probably a bit of a hypocrite. But it's still that being involved in punk rock that allowed me to maybe live with myself mm -hmm. while I was working on weapon systems that, like, killed people. Yeah. You know, I'm not proud of that. It's um, so when I tried to get out of it. Yeah. But, but punk rock helped keep me with that sanity, mm -hmm. you know, and to know that there's other ways to fight. You can keep fighting. Um, you can fight from the inside a little bit in, in certain ways. Yeah. Um, in some ways, that's kind of like what I do now working for the state is it's like safety person mm -hmm. is it gives me a chance to fight for people who don't, you know, can't necessarily fight for themselves. Like who's going to keep that worker safe right. on that boiler system when his boss is telling him to go into a dangerous position? No, I can do that. I can keep him safe. Yeah. You know, I can make sure kids don't get hurt on a public, you know, escalator because somebody didn't follow the rules. Right. And so the punk rock world kind of my whole life kept me focused on that. Like there are big issues out there. I don't have to conform to other people's desires or ideas. I can do it my way and still work for the good of the world. Right. Uh, I was kind of rambling a little bit, but it's really been central to becoming who I am. Yeah. Punk rock isn't a music. It's a, it's a way of thinking. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. I've never heard it that way, but it, it makes sense. And, you know, I don't, not that what I say matters much, but I don't think you're a hypocrite. I think, you know, we have to do our jobs that we got when we had them. And it just sounds like punk rock kind of was like your compass or what kept you, you and authentic and helped you realize like, okay, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. So I'm going to take these steps to kind of move forward or get out of it or whatever. So it's, I really appreciate you sharing that because I think it's important for people to know, you know, like who they are is unique and matters and they're figuring out their journey. And it just sounds like you figured out your journey and you're figuring it out. And punk rock is it's a part of that. So that's really cool. Yeah.